Welcome to the Candy Coated Podcast, where we serve up a sweet blend of girl talk and enlightened conversations with special guests from diverse backgrounds. From travel, food, to friendships, relationships, and family, we'll explore a wide range of topics with a fresh and unique perspective. Join us on this Candy Coated journey as we tackle important issues and have a little fun along the way. Hi, amigas. This is Candy, your host from the Candy Coder Podcast. Happy Tuesday. How are you guys doing today? Um, just wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about a topic that I don't think it gets talked about often. And that topic is big sister guilt. How many of y'all have felt guilty when trying to pursue a dream, a goal, maybe building your own life. To me, I think that I hadn't realized that I was experiencing that. Honestly, I think that I wasn't even aware that it was like a topic or a thing. Thinking about it now and putting like a word to it makes it real, makes it something to like overcome and I'm not saying like it's something that lives with you like every single day of your life it's something that it comes it comes in a flow it comes in waves it comes in when you're experiencing something new when you're just going through something or maybe you're like sitting at home you know living your best life whatever the case may be for me for example I am the oldest of three. I have two little sisters, one's 25 and one's 16. Being young and little, you often argue, you often fight, and nobody's sibling relationship is perfect, right? So when you're little, I feel like there's a lot of things that you don't necessarily understand that your sibling is going through. So for example, like, the oldest and if you're the oldest you might understand this point of view but when you're the oldest you're basically the middleman or the middle person between your parents and your siblings right sometimes you're the front line when your family experiences a hardship and that comes along with traumas maybe you get triggered all the things i would like to focus today on the big sister or older sibling you might not be the sister you might be the brother and you're listening to me today i think that oftentimes we don't think about this when like you're young and you're like kind of planning your life because who doesn't plan their life who thinks oh i'm gonna be like 25 and married that's what I thought (laughs) I really thought I was gonna be married by the time that I was 25 that's not the case I'm 29 I've already settled of course but anyways let me bring you guys back for me I feel like that guilt when I'm living my alive when I'm traveling, when I'm experiencing new things, experiencing new journeys in life, I do have my sister's support 100%. But it does get a little guilty, overwhelming, knowing that they're not there experiencing that with you. Or for example, you're not steps away from where they're at. I no longer live with my parents anymore, so it's a lot different to what I'm experiencing now. And I remember oftentimes like thinking, how come I don't have an older sister? Why did it have to be me that I'm the first born? I'm the first sister in the family. I could not tell my mom when I liked the boy and I was sad because maybe the boy didn't like me. You know, when you're little, you have those little thoughts. Oh, I have a crush and It didn't work out or, you know, because in my parents' household, we cannot date. I could not tell my mom that I liked the boy when I was in middle school. 
even less in high school. So I didn't really start dating anyone, like my parents knowing, which that'll be a topic for another day. So I couldn't really talk to my parents about stuff like that. So I, that's when I really wished, oh, I wish I had an older sister that I could talk to and tell her how I'm feeling, what I'm going through, so that, you know, she could give me advice. But that wasn't the case. That was me to my sisters. And so that's when I look back and I'm like, okay, God knows why he made me the older sister. So looking back, helping my little sisters do a project. When I was little, we didn't have the same financial resources that my parents do now or when my middle sister was growing up. It was harder for me to have access to the library, to a computer. We didn't own a computer at home, so all of my projects were done with my handwriting. My dad would help me with his drawing skills, so shout out to my dad for that. But then after things change and I started working and I'm older in high school when my little sister was in elementary school. So it was easier for her to be able to get her like projects printed to for me to buy her, you know, the border that she wanted for her science fair project. It was also easier for me to help them with like math homework, reading homework, sitting down with them because, of course, my mom couldn't do that with us. Or at least with me when I was younger because she only speaks Spanish. So given that I was the older sister, I had the pressure of like, okay, you're helping your sister do her homework. Help them understand if they don't understand. So I was held responsible for my homework and like helping them also. I'm not complaining. I'm just sharing that. As the older sister, you kind of go through different challenges in life. And when you're like the middle or youngest child, those challenges aren't there anymore because the older sibling broke those barriers. And so thinking back on hardships, on challenges that we face as a family and one that's like really in the back of my mind, but I can remember like it was just yesterday, was when my grandpa passed away. I think I was, I'm, I think I was a freshman or like going into my sophomore year. I don't really remember what year exactly it was. I do remember my mom getting that phone call that my grandpa had passed away. And so it was a really, really shocking pain to my mom. And she was in shock. She couldn't believe it. My mom was really like unresponding at the time she would cry it was a very hard time for her so being the oldest I had to step up and I wasn't allowed to process the feelings that I was feeling I had to push through and kind of act I was okay because my little sister asked me like is everything okay and so we had to tell her and she was sad and then my little sister was only about two years old so she needed that extra attention I remember having to pack up everything for my parents for my little sisters ensuring that everything was good to go because we had to leave to Mexico that same exact day and I remember packing everything helping my dad making sure that he wasn't falling asleep on the ride to Mexico because my mom, where my mom's from, it's about 16 hours. And so I remember like we were driving, we were good. I was like, okay, like making sure that everybody was okay. I had not cried. I didn't allow myself to process what was happening because I had to step up. So with that, I remember we were driving and we were headed to Mexico. And usually like I would color with my little sister, listen to music. That ride was like the longest ride ever. I experienced having a panic attack for the first time ever. I could not breathe. I could not speak. I was just completely quiet. I feel like the air was punched out of me. And and I remember like, that's when I first cried. 
that's when I first was like able to cry because the whole time I had to be strong for my mom. I had to be strong for my dad. And looking back, I remember like it was yesterday. I left out a big cry. I couldn't believe my abuelito had died. He was a big part of my life. And the simple fact that I knew that he wasn't going to be there when we got there. Um, it was really sad. Like, thinking about it. So after I I cried, I felt a lot better. I was still sad, but I think that my body hadn't processed everything thoroughly. And so... I remember also having to be there for my little sister, having to look after her. The way that it's done in Mexico, or at least in my mom's rancho, like they walk the coffin all the way to the cemetery. And it's about a good like three, five miles. And I remember walking with my little sisters on each side. Not even 10 minutes later, my little sister asks me to carry her. So I had to carry her all those miles. And and that moment when my grandpa was being lowered into the ground, and I remember I was crying. And in that moment, like someone took my little sister from my arms. And looking back, I feel bad because I don't even remember who took her from me. It wasn't my dad. It wasn't my mom. Like It wasn't none of my tias. And looking back, I realized like, oh my goodness, somebody could have taken her from me. I was so vulnerable. I was so hurt. And looking back, my baby sister got taken from my arms. And I know that it was because the way I was feeling and I was crying. So, you know, like looking back at those hardships, when you're the older sister, the older sibling, you have to step up. There is no, I might, maybe, someday. No, when there's a hardship, you have to step up. You have to make sure that you're the one that's in the front line. Because, well, at least in my case, right, I know that not everybody's sibling's relationship is the same as mine. I get that. But at least, Looking back, I'm like, wow, we went through that, we got through that, and we're here now. And so oftentimes, I think, too, like, yes, I always wanted a bigger, like an older sibling, but I didn't. And you know what? That's a reality. I'm blessed with my two little sisters and being able to experience certain things with them. It's not always just hardships. It's also experiencing happy, happy moments, happy memories, and the accomplishments that they go through. I remember when I was in high school, my prom dress had to be afforded within a certain budget. I couldn't expect a really expensive dress. I remember. My makeup was done by one of my friends. My hair was done by my tia. It's just really interesting how, you know, your life changes compared to your sisters. And again, I'm not complaining. I don't want y'all to get me wrong. I'm actually glad that my little sisters are able or were able at least to experience different things than I was. Looking back, you know, when my sister graduated, I remember we paid someone to do her makeup. The dress that she wanted for prom was something that she wanted custom made. Just looking back, like, it's so different. What you experience versus what your siblings experience. And honestly, I'm glad that it's very different from them, for sure. I do think that I miss, like, spending time with my sisters when I see that they plan a picnic, they plan an outing, and... When you're used to doing things with them every day, every other weekend, when you're living at home with your parents or you're closer to them within a proximity of your house, 
it's easier. So that's, I feel like that's when I really miss my sisters. I'm like, you know, it, I wish I was there with them or I wish they were here with me experiencing this. I honestly feel like I talk to my sister 24 7. I'm always texting her. We're always talking on the phone. When she's out shopping, she'll call me. When I'm out shopping, I'll call her. So we've we've grown past our hardships, honestly. When I first started dating my current boyfriend, it was a really hard transition for them because they were so used to being with me like the whole day. I would get home from work and we would plan, you know, let's go to Target. Let's go to Starbucks. Let's go to the mall. So I think one of the hardest transitions like in our lives, I don't think that we were ready for the day that I had a boyfriend and I was going to spend my time with him. And then when I moved out of the house, it was also a transition that I think it affected my little sister the most. My older sister is a little bit, she's older, she's more outgoing, but my little sister was the one that would always text me, I miss you. And honestly, that would break my heart. And I think that's when I feel a little guilty. And so I think, oh, okay, I not only left my parents, but I left my little sisters. And I don't think that's something that we think about when we plan to move out of the house. It's something that we, I, honestly, I didn't think about it, if I'm being honest with y'all. I didn't think about I th would think about my parents, but I never gave a thought about my little sisters. And seeing it, how it worked out and how it was processed, it's definitely something that should be thought about. You know, like you're not leaving just your home, just your parents. You're leaving little sisters. And so... It happens. It's life, right? But honestly, when you sit down and think about it, like, you only get one life. So how you do, how you live your life, it's up to you. And that's why I wanted to bring light into this topic because some of you are living at home. Maybe you're settled and married or maybe you're thinking about moving out. And if there's an advice that I can give you is to for sure enjoy you know, being at home. Take advantage of being with your parents, of being with your siblings. Enjoy those dinners. Enjoy those breakfasts. Enjoy that TV time. I know everybody's family looks different. And for example, like for me, we always made it a thing where we ate dinner together. So we would all sit down at the dining table. We would eat dinner and we would talk about how our days went. We would discuss how we were feeling, you know, how our day was. If somebody was feeling frustrated, then we would talk about it. We would, as a family, get up, clean our dining table. Somebody wash the dishes. Somebody would put up the food. And then, you know, we would go about our day. Maybe we would go for a walk. Maybe we would go outside and sit down. And so, honestly, like, those are the moments that you, you should cherish. One, you never know when you're going to get that time back with your family. And two, you never know when, you know, someone's like, you know, last day would be. So definitely take advantage of spending time with your family. Telling your parents that you love them. Telling your sisters, your brothers that you love them, that you cherish them. That everything, you know, I feel like, yes, it may be hard for some than others. But honestly, be grateful. Be grateful for the life that you have. Be grateful that you are where you are and that regardless of the hardships, regardless of the challenges, you're here today. Not a lot of people are blessed enough to say that they're here, especially after the pandemic. A lot of, a lot of people were, were lost. And so going back to being a big sister and just be the person that you've always wanted to have in your life. Be there, support them, teach them, guide them, you know. And if you're the little sister, if you're the middle, like, child, the middle sister, cherish your older sibling because they went through stuff that you have no idea that they went through, but they're still here. And be grateful for that. The way I think we've 
we've grown up out of our little faces where, you know, we would argue a lot. My sisters and I always told each other, like, we miss each other, that we love each other. Why? Because you never know when someone's last day on earth is. And so now that I've been talking about, you know, this guilt and stuff, I can actually talk to you about my little sisters. My middle sister is so outgoing, so self-confident. Like, she is so amazing at what she does. Like, she lives her best life. And I just, I admire that from her because she just thrives through. She's very outspoken. (laughs) She will tell you how it is. My little sister is the sweetest. She's a little bit more on the shy side. Um, she'll she'll try to be like a little bit more reserved when you first meet her, but after that, like she is really funny. So that's the thing. Both of my sisters are really, really funny. If you give them the time of day, they will make you laugh. Oh my goodness. I remember we would like when I used to live with my parents, like we would laugh late at night, super late at night. You know, that's when you you can't really be like laughing, right? Because your parents said like, go to sleep. No, we would find, I don't know what it would be. Memes, thoughts, something. Something would come to our mind and we would be laughing and giggling. And oh my goodness, it would be so funny. So I think that's one of the things that I miss. One of the things that I miss, like living at home, spending time with them at, you know, random time of the day or just when I get home from work you know having to actually plan to see them it's like when can when does it work because of our work schedules or school schedules but honestly like this is something that you grow past it maybe when you're traveling and your sisters don't get to travel like that or they haven't experienced that then that's when it hits a little bit you know going to when I went to Chicago or Vegas or Miami, there were different things that I would think about my sisters. Like, oh, my little sister would like this. Or is this my sister's favorite food? Just feeling that little feeling of like, oh, I wish they were here. But honestly, like I said, I love my sisters. I absolutely adore them. They are my best friends. Given, you know, through the challenges, of course, and everything. I think that we have grown and we're in a much better place now with each other, being able to trust each other, and be there for each other in ways that we couldn't be there before, maybe, or we didn't agree on certain things. Moving past that has helped us grow so much. And I'm really glad because I don't think I can live this life without them. They really make my days better, knowing that, you know, I can call them, knowing that I can hang out with them and we can do certain things together and so yeah I really do enjoy spending time with them and so I tell you now enjoy it cherish you know being with them and so this is a little shout out to my little sisters my little sister Coco keep Keep being the way you are, live your best life, and continue to be that big sister for our little sister each and every day. Keep pushing, and I'm so proud of you of where you are now. Shout out to my little sister, my princess. No matter how big or old you are, you will always be my princess. I'm so proud of you, and I know that God will take you so far in life, and you have our support to continue pushing through, to continue, you know, no matter the obstacles that it sent to you, you will get through them and you have us in your back. You have our support. And so, yeah, I wanted to thank you all for listening. Again, try to be the best big sister you can ever be. Be the best little sister you could ever be. Just enjoy, just cherish life. Just if you have a little a little guilt that comes to the back of your mind, tell it to go away. Because you know what? At the end of the day, you're happy. You're living your best life. And if your siblings truly love you, they're going to be happy for you too. So remembering that in the back of your mind, 
It definitely helps because, you know, you're you're doing what you want to do. You're living a life that you wanted to create all along. And just knowing that you're happy. Be happy with what you're doing. And so, honestly, it's just a feeling that comes and goes. And I hope that you have learned something that you were able to connect with me. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep following me for more episodes. And I hope you guys enjoyed it today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hi, Amias. Thank you for watching my video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me um, on Instagram at The Candy Corded Podcast, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and TikTok as The Candy Corded Podcast. And also visit my website, candycoredpodcast.com. As always, thank you so much for all the love, the support you gave me. And I hope you have a great day, Amiga. Bye.